So before the video begins, I do want to explain what you're about to watch. A few days ago, I did a study collaboration with Gotham Chess, where we tackled eight different, like really interesting positions, not necessarily tactics, but more kind of positional and intuitive exercises. So I think this will be really interesting for the viewers to kind of get a glimpse of how training works at our level. Um, I also want to thank Greg Shahadi and the U.S. Chess School for providing the training material because I know they, they usually keep it secretive. So if you want to make a donation to the U.S. Chess School, I'll leave a link in the description. And they are a 501c3. So if you want to make a tax-deductible contribution, you can do so and support some of the top talent in the U.S. Um, now, what you're about to watch is the last four positions that we attempted to solve. If you want to see the first four, Levy posted on his channel. I'll leave a link in the video description. And, uh, and leave a comment. Let me know what you think if you want to see more content like this. And uh, I do encourage viewers to kind of play along and try and come up with your own ideas as we tackle the problems. And I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, we have um, we have four more. Let's do it. I wanna I wanna scan a few of these for. Okay, I, I don't want any end game ones. Those are kind of lame. <laughs> I uh, wouldn't mind an end game one, but okay, uh, okay. Here, when, when uh, you sometimes when you when you say something is lame, it signifies that you're not comfortable with it and you need to work at it to to make it less lame. I don't know. Okay. So I was picking up a, a, on some fear there. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Well, here's an end game position. And, uh, you Let's know, we, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'll face my fears. Okay. See you in three minutes. Good luck. All right. Good luck. Okay. Um, again, I'm absorbing what's going on. Equal material. Um, some balance with the structure, bishop for knight, white has, white has a bit more like activity, like small lean development, like the rooks out of play. So we might want to act timely in this position. Um, beginning to search for candidate moves. I guess black wants to play this and activate the rook because it's uh, the easiest file to access. So the first move that comes to mind is rook d1, which prevents rook d8 tactically because then bishop b7 wins material. Uh, if we play rook d1, the knight's a bit restricted. The king has a hard time coming in. I think, yeah, just rook d1. Rook d1 is, is just a nice prophylactic move. If we don't play rook d1, black's gonna, just gonna get the rook in. Um, again, I'm looking for for some reason to reject the move, some response for black. Uh, knight a6 is, is legal. Knight a6, we m might even... Sacking the pawn might be premature. I was thinking rook d7, but... Yeah, let's think, rook d1, knight a6. B5, knight c5. There's kind of a funny line, actually. So rook d1, knight a6, b5, knight c5. Rook goes back to c1, setting up some discovery. Knight can go back to b7. Oh, there's a funnier line. So rook d1, knight a6, rook a1. Oh no, our pawn. Oh no, black's pawn. Oh no, our bishop. Oh no, this doesn't work because knight b8. <laughs> I was thinking we would skewer in the end. Oh, it doesn't work. Okay, so rook d1, knight a6. It's like the only active move for black. I'm trying to figure out if we want to sack. How do we want to do this? Maybe just rook d7. We give away the pawn and then bishop a4. I think I got it, Mr. Rosen. Okay, let's let's hear it. Uh, it's obviously either rook d1 or rook a1. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, I didn't um, even consider Rook A1, actually. So I I'm I'm so I'm not gonna lie to you. Um mm -hmm. I'm not saying rook a1 mostly because I think I'm getting too fancy. Like I don't see a legitimate reason to play it. I will say that I saw rook a1, king b8, rook d1, and then that's an improved version because obviously after rook d1, rook d8, bishop b7, as I'm sure you pointed out to your chat, yep. we have this nice thing. Um, I calculated rook a1, a6, rook d1, and... I don't get the difference. I guess the pawn is on a light square, which in some end games can help our bishop. But I'm not gonna lie to you, Eric. I do not. I don't get the difference. So I'm just gonna go rook. D1. So I. Oh, you you would play rook d one immediately. Yeah. For Interesting. Because sure. after hearing your thought process with like rook a one, provoke a six, move back to d one. Um, I kind of like that better, even though I didn't consider it uh okay. initially i spent all my time like thinking okay rook d1 how does black respond and i was only looking at rook d1 knight a6 and trying to just refute knight a6 um because i wanted to oh. i wanted to have like something concrete here where like one of the lines i've i wanted to make work is then we move back we lose a pawn, we win box pawn, we lose our bishop, we have rook eight, but there's knight b8 in the end. So that didn't work. So I eventually thought, okay, rook d1, knight a6, uh, and then just move the rook into d7, give away the pawn, and then kind of just chill like bishop a4. And then we're guaranteed to uh, try and clean up on the seventh rank and just have a more active rook. But with I'm all that said, I kind of like rook a1 better as just an improvement. <laughs> but actually, I'm not sure because rook a1, black can maybe just gambit the pawn and that's what I rook. thought. But then we play b5, b6. That's really funny. Oh my God. I didn't even see that knight a6 was legal. Like, I don't mm. know why I just totally. What? What did I? I guess I thought. Oh, I know what I thought. I know what I thought. So I thought rook d1, knight a6, b5, knight b4, rook d7. So I calculated this uh, and I was like, this is winning, but I completely forgot. The knight, oh, the pawn, like, it's just, it's just that straightforward. And then, which now makes me think it's rook a1 also. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's the type of position, like we, it seems like white should be better, but white has to play uh, kind of quickly. Um to like see some advantage before black can kind of get the rook into play so i'm i'm still conflicted i like intuitively i i still like rook d1 better but um yeah if this were a longer game I, I would take some time debating between these two moves oh my god okay so the right answer is rook a1 but the defensive so the in the game greg played rook d1 but there's something even more incredible. Uh, knight a6. Oh, knight b8. Yeah, oh. it's not. It's it's actually not knight c5 because then this is still soft. Because rook a1, king b8, b6. Wow. So that's that's actually fascinating. B6, I, I didn't see. But I thought knight a6 just didn't work at all because b5, and then we can go back. I guess knight c5, rook a1. So it's like. But knight, oh, knight b8. Oh, wow. Knight oh, b8 wow. also didn't see. Yeah, that's like one of the moves. It's like you, you only look oh. at the forward moves, but the backward move, it hits the bishop and covers d7. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I guess like mentally, my, my brain just discarded the knight because I, I just, I was like, it can't stomp rook d7 and the a7 pawn is just always weak. But the knight to b8. Wow. Knights are so tricky. Like wow. Even even deep into the end game, it's uh, it's important not to discard the the dumb looking knight moves. That's amazing! Wow, yeah, it's rook a one. So if we go back, just to explain, mm -hmm. at least you considered rook a one, but rook a one it provokes a six. Yeah, and then I assume rook d one, and yeah. that way there's no knight a six, and then we're. We're just dominating the position. And if if knight b five, 
you just go here. Southern. Yeah, just here. And like the knight can't touch us because mm -hmm. it's just totally. And then if rook f8, it's. Well, you know, what's interesting about this position is that it's actually not over. You now need to bring the king. So mm -hmm. if you start getting tunnel vision and, for example, play rook b7, trying to win this pawn, like black goes knight back, which was not possible a move ago. Uh, although I guess it, I guess you could have theoretically played it like here, but you would just slowly improve your position. Black is just seems stuck here, actually, because yeah. rook's always tied down. The king can't really do much. Neither can the knight. Yeah. Rook a1. That's actually interesting. Yeah, I, I thought about it, but I completely didn't realize why, like, what is Black's, in, yeah, knight a6, knight b8, I, I didn't have, like, at all. But I guess, I'll say this, if we had 10 minutes, if this was classical, I think we find rook a1, knight a6, knight b8, all this stuff. But definitely in two and a half minutes. It's hard. Yeah, it was, yeah. like, concrete calculation and understanding the nuance of forcing Black to play a6. Yeah, that was, that was a good one. That was probably one of the more difficult ones just to like see thoroughly. Some hidden ideas there. White to moving it? Yes. All right, I'll see you in three. Okay, good luck. Okay, so making sure this is white to move. Okay, equal material. Seems like some actually this looks like a Benoni, uh or not a Benoni, Grunfeld. Greg was probably black. Um again, just absorbing what's going on. Oh, white seems to have some pressure, like just better pieces, black's a bit lacking in, in harmony. Uh nine and h4 is a bit strange. We probably want it to come back at some point. One move that comes to mind is d6, but that only, only probably helps black. So yeah, it, it's easy just to just stare at this position, and not know what to think about. Um, I mean, in terms of ways we can improve, I don't think we want to take the pawn because then rook c8, and our uh, our thing gets pinned. I'm really not sure. Bishop g5, bishop f3. D6 looks interesting though, just from a, just like we have a pass pawn, why not push it? Bishop E6, Queen B5, because we do prevent the knight from, I guess we give away the C6 square, so there's this move. But the knight's kind of tied down. No, we don't want to push the pawn juice. Oops. Ah, what did I do? Okay, we're not playing Queen F4. <laughs> In tricky position. If we move back, I guess we give the bishop a square. Wow, it's already time. I have no idea what I would do. Maybe a th a three. I have no idea. Alexa, quiet. I'm gonna wait. Le wait for Levy to to start talking. I'm still looking here. I'm not sure. If, if this were a bullet game, I'd play like rook c1 and uh, and just like gradually improve, I guess. Because what does black want to do? Black is a bit stuck, actually. Yeah, we're going over time here. <laughs> Levy might be stuck, too. Oh, there's knight b5 as well. Oh, knight b5. And then if we trade, we're also threatening knight d6. Not super confident, but knight b5 is looking like a nice option out of everything considered so far. Because we're threatening knight d6. We don't mind if the bishop... Oh, knight d5 takes, takes knight d5, bishop c4... Even bishop f3 looks nice. Okay, uh, we're way over time. Yo, I think we went over time there. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was sitting here just like really... Contemplating who, who, life. Who started the uh, last analysis? Was it you or me? Me? Uh, I think you started, yeah, because you were 
mentioning Rook A1. Okay. So I've okay. I struggle with this one. I um Yes. My I set a timer and it went off and I, I had no no clue what I was gonna do. Okay. Um and then but then like I kept thinking because you were still thinking too. So uh -huh. um in terms of the position, I mean one of the early moves I looked at was D six. Yeah. Which oh play the uh you could go oh, to the, go to the board. Yeah, D six. Yeah. Um which it, it's a move to consider. I, I think it just gives away too many squares, mainly e6 for the bishop or the eventual, uh, or even c6, um, in some cases, and like can reroute. So, intuitively, even though it looks interesting, I don't think I'd want to play it so soon. Mm -hmm. uh, another thought was just to move the knight back to f3. But then I realized like the purpose of the knight on h4 and what probably happened earlier in the game was it, it moved here to kick away the bishop. Yeah. And like Black's in a situation where the bishop is just a bit awkward on d7. It, it can't develop actively to these squares. It's restricted along both diagonals. So we don't want to give the bishop like an easy square to move to. Um, when my timer went off, I was like, I kind of just panicked and, and thought, okay, I'll just play rook c1 and improve. Uh, but then as more time passed, I, I found another candidate move which would probably be my choice uh, is knight b5. Okay. Which, even though it does allow the potential trade, I think the resulting position where we get the bishop hair, there's a lot of pressure on the queen side, looks nice for white. Knight b5 also threatens knight d6. Um, so it looks like a nice move to start trying to squeeze black in some way. Okay. I but I'm confident. not entirely confident. I can confidently say that this one goes to Team Gotham, but it's going to oh. end up in your portion of the YouTube video. Oh, no. <laughs> My content. Rookie 4. Oh, Rookie 4 is, is a move I forgot about. Which is why B5 is the is is the really scary problem here for Black. Ah, so A4. Well, here's no. the thing. <laughs> So yeah, I so like I, I saw this and I'm like it doesn't work because and then I'm like oh my god there's this move, which is just such a peculiar move. Yeah, it's actually it's it's probably a typical type of move for these structures. But yes. It's still like kind of a, a blind spot. You don't always consider the rook delving into your territory. Uh, basically, I, I spent the entire time deliberating between bishop f3 and a4. Like I, mm -hmm. I. Even now, I, I don't actually fully know. Uh, basically, all I calculated was um, like if a4, knight b4, bishop c5, and like knight c2, that doesn't work, obviously. So I was like, okay, if a4, they will play rook c8 to enable knight b4. Mm. But I, 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 even now, I can't tell the difference between these two moves. I, part of me wants to play bishop f3 because a4 is so committal like i maybe i want to play a3 and don't allow knight b4 at all but that allows black a full tempo and maybe there's something i'm missing like i don't know queen a5 or something like now that i'm talking out loud um, you're definitely on a better track than me like not not blundering a knight um, well i no, that's it i, I mean that just spotted it i guess in the the first like thought that I had basically was B5 and, and I'm like, it doesn't work. And I'm like, oh my God, rookie four. So I actually said out loud, I was like, no, no one tell Eric rookie four exists. <laughs> I <laughs> but, was looking uh, at chat. So uh, even if yeah, you did I, tell me, I wouldn't have seen. These goons were looking at, you know, queen C5. So um, uh, that's all you have to know about my chat. I think your chat is probably on average like 800 points higher rated than my chat. Uh, and queen A6, possible. very creative ways of losing the queen. Mm. For, Zero compensation. It's interesting sometimes to look for the worst move in the position. Some some um, chat members are good at that. I, I didn't I, quite like Bishop F3. It was on my radar, just as an improving move, but mm -hmm. it, it takes away the last square for our knight. I mean, black can't win the knight, but um, it just looked a little bit awkward. So Even H6, perhaps? These don't actually have written answers, so we actually have oh. to boot up the, the trusty engine. The trusty machine. I, I don't have access to the engine on this analysis board, so oh I might actually switch to my board just to just to see the lines. Um 
N- Engine says <laughs> Knight back to F3. Knight F3. But uh, like I'm I'm leaving it running. Knight F3, it's still the top choice. What is this? Oops. Knight F3. Rook, Rook takes E3. Rook E3 is a top line. So why not Bishop? Let's say Bishop G4, just typical move. I I I guess, I guess White is just the position H three. Okay, well I can conveniently I can convincingly say it's not Knight V five. But I also was like, why would I play Knight F three? I feel like we just came from this position. So, yeah, why, why you know it feels like this just happened. But we don't know that. Like it could. Yeah. It could have been something earlier. Okay, so let's. Well, look let's. At Bishop. Okay, knight b five just to confirm, loses for e four. So you were suggesting? I mean, a a four is one of the top moves. But knight b wait, wait knight b four. What knight before bishop c five? A five. What Black takes? Is sacks upon. Oh my God, sacks! Oh my, it's 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 crazier Rooks, than that, oh Eric. Man. Bishop before rook c eight. <laughs> what? That's queen b three, queen b three, a before queen b four, rook c three, and then rook. E- okay. Well, oh. Um. Oh man. That's hard to calculate. I wonder if this one wasn't like it was included as a pro- like it wasn't checked with the engine and maybe the intended solution was like a move like a4 not realizing this computer line that that's wild yeah well it's it's actually more fascinating to me that rook takes e3 is just the that's also crazy yeah <laughs> like just just take and then go here and hope for mm-hmm. the best and white's best option is to sack back the exchange and get this switching to your board wait how did that uh, happen oh wow so we just play e4 and maintain the center yeah yeah um, i didn't see any of that <laughs> i'm not gonna lie uh i definitely didn't see that either um okay so i was looking at bishop f3 But computer's not too impressed. It just says spits out either rook b8 or rook e5 or even still rook e3. Amazing. You definitely deserve more credit for this one, though, because you, you identified rook e4. <laughs> you didn't find oh. all the crazy engine lines, though. No, 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 no. Most certainly not. Um, yeah, wow, that is wild. It's funny. This was the one I was like incredibly confident on, and then it mm. just you get this cold shower. Um, okay, but we have two more. We have two more. We should not sit here and you know stare at uh, at, at at the board. We should. I, I I went back to ones that have annotations, so they've probably been engine verified. Okay. Um, that yeah, one good. was <laughs> that one was wild. This this next position is also pretty wild though. Mm-hmm. So it's white to move. Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, three minutes. Yep. See you in uh, at forty-eight. Cool. Okay, that was accidental confetti. There's a keyboard shortcut. Uh, when I do Control B, I did Control V and then mistyped. Control B. It's a browser extension. Anyway. Um, let me focus white to move okay so we have the bishops it's equal material um i mean c5 is a move we would love to achieve it doesn't quite does it work tactically actually because if knight c5 we have queen d4 winning material i think the problem is knight takes d5 and we have nothing. 
because Knight F6 comes. Well, the thing is, Black's not even threatening this because of Queen D4. So I wonder if we can prepare C5 with a move. I guess Black wants to play Rook C8 here. Oh, but the A pawn hangs. Also, Black is threatening this pawn. <laughs> so that's more, more reason to play Knight E3, which just looks like a really natural move. Reinforcing the pawn. Also over defending d5, so we're threatening c5. And just to reiterate, if c5 takes queen d4, I mean, that's the main threat. And if black doesn't take, then we get c6 with the fork. So knight e3. Um, I guess the question, how does black respond to this? Because there's, there's not quite rook c8. Queen e7, I think just runs into knight f5. Another double attack. If queen c5, bishop d4, looks really nice. Yeah, this just looks like an all-around like, great move. Like, very multi-purpose. Like, these three squares are the most relevant. Uh, one more time. Rook c8, rook a5. I guess the nice thing is if knight takes... Oh. Wait, knight e3, rook... Actually, this would require some calculation. It doesn't dissuade me from playing knight e3. It might just be a bit more complicated. I didn't really consider like the other, like there's a mate in one threats, um, which I probably should have considered. A queen d3, I think there's queen h4. Defending, hitting the pawn. Queen can then sit here. So with this move, we do prevent, we do kind of discourage queen h4. Okay, um, I think it's time. Okay, I forgot to set a timer, but I think we're we're timed. Yes. Um, all right, I got to go first. Uh, yep. I have nothing conclusive, so I... Mm -hmm. um, I obviously looked at c5 and then after knight d5 I just like I don't know I didn't find a way to brute force anything um I looked at d6 and my idea with d6 is that I'm pushing a pawn and that looks scary and I also thought maybe rook e7 because I don't know why but that kind of looks scary also I guess I can play c5 mm -hmm. is sort of the point but I don't fully believe in the move d6 which brought me to queen d3, which attacks h7. But I thought f5 was just really good. Like, I just thought the fact that black gets to take space, like g6 is one thing, but f5 is, I don't know. I mean, f5 just, I just somehow don't believe. Mm -hmm. Which then brought me to queen d4. But I was not able to refute queen f6 fully. Um but now that I'm looking at it, maybe I just take and then go rookie seven. But I'm not going to pretend like I, you know, I, I had that prior. Um, so then I looked at a knight move, <laughs> mm -hmm. like knight e3, knight g3. I even looked at f4 to stop queen g5. I scanned everything. Uh, I'm mostly just stalling for time at this point. So if you have to uh, force me to play a move, then I will probably play. I'll probably play queen d3. Okay. And then I will figure it out. Interesting. So, so I, I spent most of my time just looking at one move. I will say I, I started with like the same kind of force and calculation, C5, Knight D5, quickly realized it doesn't lead to much. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, I didn't, I I've, like after I saw C5 didn't work, I started looking at Knight E3. more I looked at it, the more I really liked it. And then only at the very end did I even consider Queen D3. And then just saw, I saw the response queen h4 mm. rather than, F, than f5, which maybe also just diffuses white's attack. In many cases, the queen can sit here or black might be threatening this. Rook e4? Um, rook e4, queen, queen h6. h6. And you survived that. Oh my God. Bishop c1? I guess, yeah, I guess, yeah. No. Yeah? Wow. 
but f5 might be a, another like maybe just more simple just block the diagonal for the the battery but yeah like i looked at 93 and i did not refute it but mm -hmm. I, I i don't know felt so slow. i i really like 93 because it's very multi-purpose move where uh first of all we over defend d5 so if we get another move in 93 and then c5 it's just winning um because d5 can't be taken if knight takes c5 we have queen d4 with the double attack uh, we also defend c4, so we're, we're preventing knight takes c4. We're also having the ideas of knight f5, which can be relevant in cases like if black tries queen h4. Um, but then there's other cases where uh, where like we combine queen d3 or queen d4 and knight f5. And then like one line that looked a little bit weird was knight knight e3, black has to stop c5. So there's rook c8, mm -hmm. um, and we can we could consider snagging the pawn, but then have to deal with these lines where a rook gets attacked. So, and I was thinking there'd be enough resources for white between either either going into that line and um, including a move like queen d4, or just going straight for the kill of knight f5. Mm -hmm. um, so I basically just concluded knight e3 is the most most like useful multi-purpose move. Oh my god! Did this we miss is stuff. This position is black to move. Oh no! But <laughs> but we, we did still, it. You know, let's uh, can still analyze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should we use the engine then? <laughs> uh, queen d3 and knight e3 are both good. <laughs> uh, Oh my god. Oh, yeah, it's like but, plus four for white. So but but you know, you know, I will say I will say uh queen d3 g6. Uh wait, what's wrong with f5? Okay, so it's actually a combination of both of our ideas. Mm. It's like queen d3 and then you, you need to go knight e3. So it's just that white is it's actually crazy. If it was white to move, it's plus five, really? Yeah, multiple lines too. That is astounding. So white's attack is just extremely strong. Wow. And then, okay, so it, it's funny because if you flip it in the original position... Should we take more time to... Well, no, because I saw the answer. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Because I, I, I... But the answer for black is actually knight takes c4. Oh, yeah, I just assumed that was one of the threats. And then... what? But queen d3, oh, but queen, queen h4. Uh, oh, you, okay. It's what you said. It's this geometric sequence which holds... Defend from a distance. Yeah, queen h4, g3. Ah, uh, knight, knight b2. b2. Hitting the queen, yeah. yeah that was right. relevant in the other line, too. All right. Well, that was, uh, you know, uh, good. Um, see, the thing is, I didn't look at the moves because I didn't want to spoil the answer. So, uh, okay, this next one, I will... Yeah, we I just got used to every position being white to move. But then the other thing, like we still get value from like looking at whatever these positions are, even though that one we kind of botched, like got our kind of calculation and ideas flowing. And we're, we're yeah. treating every position as just like what to do, like not not looking for immediate tactics, just trying to find the best move. I, yeah, I'm glad that I just checked for this next one because this next one is black to move. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Okay, one sec. Uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously there's you know there's value. Um, granted, it it is it is good to solve positions for the for the right person. It's always my favorite thing when I was teaching. Uh, my student would sit there for five minutes and then go, "Wait, whose move is it?" And I was like, "I know, man. Tell mm. me about it." Okay, three minutes. Nine p.m. for you. Eight p.m. for me. Yes. Good luck. All right. Good luck. Okay. Uh, huge thank you to uh to are we supposed to? Thanks, Danny. Welcome back. Good to see you. Gifting fifty subs. That's insane. Also, we're at like an all time high sub number of four thousand subs. But I, I should okay I should use my time appropriately here. Um, this is supposed to be a serious training session. Uh, so it's wait, it's white to mover. 
<laughs> Wait, it's black to move, right? It's black to move. Black to move. Okay. <laughs> he just told this story about his students, like thinking in position, <laughs> asking which color to move. Okay, so first move that comes to mind is is knight takes d4. Knight takes d4. I mean, this is a very common tactical motif. Uh, the one thing we have to be aware of is bishop takes h7, king h8. It's kind of messy. It looks nice for black, though. Also thinking, like, if we can mix up the move order, like, start with this, and then take, and then we go down a piece, probably not enough compensation there. Okay, so... And this is still an idea, though. Like, queen h4, g3, queen h3, but then knight f4. It's almost really good. If not for knight f4, I think black would have a promising position. Because f3 would be weak. But it gives me more reason to lean towards this move, knight d4. And then, I mean, we are trading pawns one way or another. Bishop takes h7, king h8. But I like the transformation for black. Uh, there's another line, takes, and this seems very concrete. So takes, takes, king, h8. White does have a few options with moving the queen, too. Oh, but if, if white moves the queen there, there's, um, there's knight e2. I was thinking some eventual queen h4. Yeah, it just looks too too good for white. Um, so knight d4, what, what is white doing here? So he takes bishop h7, king h8. Um, I mean, white probably takes back queen here. g3, queen takes. There's some bishop move back. But f3 is so weak. No offense to f3. Maybe bishop, bishop e4, d5. Yeah, this looks this looks pretty straightforward. Just a common Yo. Alexa quiet. Yo. Um so I'm conflicted. Okay. Uh wait, did I start last time? Uh I yes, you did. Okay, so you, you go. But you 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 drew me in there with your conflict. I'm curious, but uh I'm not too conflicted. So I, would... I really, I really want to go bishop takes f3. Oh, I didn't consider that. <laughs> I don't understand this position, actually. I mean, it isn't... It just... Okay, so I, I spent most of my time just spotting this move and thinking this is just really nice for black. Um, uh, wait, uh, go, go to my oh, board. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, knight takes d4. Idea, knight takes d4, queen h4. Queen f2. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, Dude, no. I, 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 also saw, I also saw this. I was like, really? queen h4, and then I, oh, my God. I didn't see queen f2. <laughs> Yay, mutual blind spot. I, I swear I saw the exact same thing. Like, literally. Mm. I was like, what is this? But you realize, you realize sooner before it was yes. too late. Yeah. Queen f2 is... Uh, yeah, it's, it's a blind spot because you you forget the queen can legally move here when the knight's not no longer yes. on the two. Yes. I so still want to make this work. Like takes takes bishop c five. There's I, bishop I know. three. And, I uh, know. I. Uh, but queen h four check immediately is probably just winning, right? I mean, I don't know. I was considering that too, so I I rejected this because of g three. Ah, and then bishop e four. Oh. Wait, what? Okay, wait. Queen h four g three. Yeah. Queen h3, knight f4 was why I rejected it. But maybe we just move back and it's like positionally weak for white. Oh, interesting. So I actually, just saw bishop e4, but that's probably... Mm. That allows queen g2, so... Wait, in what line? Bishop... g3, oh, queen, after h3, queen h3. Yeah. Oh, after queen h3. Oh. Yeah, I think knight f4 is the issue. Oh. Our queen is kind of short on squares there. Then it's bishop takes f3, right? That's interesting. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I um, mean, 
now now that I I see Queen F two refutes Knight takes D four, I I still I'm I'm drawn to Queen H four G three Queen F six. But um, tell tell me about Bishop F three. Like, what's your calculation? Actually, I just I just realized that might be like a complete idiot. Um, because Bishop F three, there could be Bishop F five, which I didn't oh. even I didn't even consider for a In second. Between move. Yeah, I I well I like this this this, and I just thought. Ah, like we get here, and this check. It's definitely That's... your style of play, like just sack and attack. Yeah, there's uh, two types of sacrifices. Uh, you know, proper ones, Mikhail Tals, and I, I'm I'm not included in this category. Um, I I like th this. Seems very professional. Soften it up, and then yeah, these uh, F3 and D4 are, are quite both tender. Yeah, if I was in a blitz game, I would probably play bishop takes f3 and lose. But but this, this, and just going back seems very, very controlled. This just seems... Because how do you guard this? Is there like a3? But then f3 is hanging. But actually, like a3 takes... I don't know, something takes, pawn takes. Here and like this... White castles. White is not legally. Uh, I don't have. We're gonna assume on. casting is legal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was wondering instead of taking on c three, if we can, we can start with some in between moves like knight d four. <laughs> mm. Just a possibility, but. I mean, here we we went upon if casting. Can we just keep our pawn advantage somehow? Either like take the knight, or maybe just keep our bishop along the the long diagonal, like move all the way back. But then there might be like g four. Oh, queen g six is risky looking. But maybe necessary. Want to want to get the knight to h three in that position? That takes some work. Yeah, wow. Huh. Mm. Okay, let's let's look. Let's look. Yeah, go for it. Uh it is a hundred percent queen h4, and then uh so the engine eval might not work because it doesn't realize that castling is legal. Oh. Which is I don't even know how to set that up. How do I <laughs> like can I even enable that? uh that's so strange i might you, I don't know. you could if you wanted to just paste in the pgn now because you have the annotated file if you know how to do that i think i should be able to yeah one sec okay yeah so queen h4 queen f6 but how bad is this take knight h4 well, of course, the computer just refutes me by voluntarily playing the move king d1. Yeah, see, like, I would definitely lose against computers at all times. Mm -hmm. um, also, castling, actually. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I forgot about <laughs> castling. That uh, admittedly did not occur to me. Uh, all right, and just as a as a Wait, as a castling not f3? Rook f3 and like bishop uh, b4. Like, oh, bishop b4. Oh, ouch. Yeah. Okay. Um, th this one, I was too stubborn. I mean, queen h4. You, you deserve more points, though, because it's bishop f3 is better than just blundering a piece. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Queen f6. Yeah, just going back. Uh, a3. Oh, so it's interesting. If you take, this is wrong because after bishop f3 castles, white is better. Oh. So I guess, yeah, bishop... that file is a, a problem. Yeah, g4. It says g4. <gasps> oh, yeah, just g4 and like h3. Yeah, and you're just pinned everywhere. Oh, my God. I, I was thinking about this line, like trying to figure out how to evaluate because there's, uh, there's a double pin. Knight's pinned, but the g pawn's pinned, but black is more stuck. King h2 is probably a threat. 
I, I'm happy that in my, you know, th this is this is the beautiful thing about my style. Sometimes you you look at Bishop F3 and it's idiotic, and then sometimes you see like G4 and you're like, mm -hmm. this must be good, and and the computer agrees. But um, apparently after Queen F6 A3, Black should play. It doesn't actually. It doesn't actually say. Uh, I don't have the engine turned on, but um, I might it says paste this. In. Castle. Ah, you, it's a move order thing. So you 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 don't take. You 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 go here, attacking the rook first. So that if ah. rook f one, then you take, and then you go back. I'm and trying to they... follow along. Can you can you share that one more time? So instead of instead of taking on c3, we we take on f3, hitting the rook. And if castling, what happens? If castles, the knight takes d4. Oh. Ah, so we we simultaneously defend the bishop. Yeah. Attack the queen, and if takes, we we keep the tempo, so then we're not losing our bishop. Uh, yep. We just have to master the tempo is the key to success. Yeah, that's one thing that I, I, I try to practice at least a few times a day because um, it's definitely the, the thing that's lacking in my skill set the most. Magnus should try to master the tempo. I think it'll it'll really serve him well in his next World Championship match. I feel like he's he's moved on from mastering the tempo and he's just mastering more meaningful things in life these days. Like Gambit? Like collabing with Ludwig and gambiting, yeah, and Bond Cloud and NFTs. Yes. Like there's so many more things to life than the, just the tempo. Like understanding the soul of the father. Exactly. Yeah.